Hello, I'm Tony Francola from Acceleratio, and today I'm going to show you one of the hidden gems of our tool SP Docket. Today we are going to talk about queries and rules. Queries and rules helps you enforce company policies across your SharePoint farm, including setting document versioning, uh, finding checkout files, and setting other settings uh, on the document library or list level. The feature has two components. One component is queries, which allows you to query your SharePoint database to retrieve information about particular settings or stuff that has been configured inside of your SharePoint. And the rules component that allows you to set some of these settings according to your company policies or other best practices that you might configure in your company. In order to start queries and rules, on the home screen, you need to click on the Queries Rule and Rules button. Let's take a look at a couple of samples that are built in into SP Docket. The first one I want to show you is Checked Out Files. This query looks for all the checked out files in your SharePoint organization. This helps you detect if some files have been checked out for a long time or some person has left the company and left the files checked out and this is preventing other people to make changes on, on top of these files. So in order to do that or to find these files, I need to run this query. This query is configured to ask me uh, where exactly I want to find these files. So in my case, I'm going to limit my query to just one site collection, our demo site collection. So just, I'm just going to choose site collection then I'm going to choose my web application and the desired site collection. Queries can be configured differently to query your entire farm, to query entire web application or to query multiple site collections. I'm going to click OK. The results are going to be shown on my screen. And as you can see, there is a couple of files that have been checked out by me. And these files are listed on the screen. I can click open to see what exactly is in these files. And I can then use SharePoint interface to check them in. One of the other useful, useful queries that I have is the one that shows me all the lists that have a large number of items. In my case, I'm looking for lists that have more than 4,500 items. This is very useful because SharePoint has a threshold of 5,000 items per list or per list view. So this can be helpful for me to detect if there are some large lists that could be causing problems in the future. As you can see, I already have that query in my queries list and I have already run that query today. And as you can see on my screen, I have a couple of lists that have more than uh, 4,500 items. So, in case this is going to potentially cause any problems for me, I should check these lists and see if I, uh, we can divide the contents in these lists to more uh, libraries. Let's pretend for a second that there is a company policy in our organization that says that we need to enable document versioning for every single document library in our organization or in our SharePoint. As you can see, you can enforce that via templates, but user can still re revert your settings and disable document versioning. So in my case, I first want to find out all the lists that have versioning disabled, and then I want to use a rule to enforce our company policy and enable versioning on all the document libraries in my SharePoint. So I'm first going to use a query. I already built one. And this query is going to show me all the document libraries that have versioning disabled. I'm going to run my query. And in a couple of moments, a report is going to be shown to me that set displays all the lists or all the document libraries that have document versioning enabled. And as you can see, I have two document libraries in marketing and sales sites that have this setting uh, configured to be disabled, versioning disabled. Building a query is very simple. There is a built-in wizard that helps you uh, go through all the steps and you can easily create your own queries without any spe specific knowledge of PowerShell or any other uh, scripting technology. In order to create a new query, you just need to click New Query button on the ribbon. Type in the name of your query.
choose the appropriate scope. So for example, if you're querying something that's list based, some list setting, you're going to choose lists. Otherwise, you're going to choose other, uh, other levels. So in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to create a list query. Click next. Choose the fields that are going to be shown on your report. I'm going to stick with the default ones. I'm just going to choose title and URL. You can choose the default sort. So in my case, I'm just going to choose to sort by title. Then I can choose a trigger that can run this query. So for example, I can choose to run it automatically to be scheduled. So it's going to run at the desired time and the date, or uh, I can configure it to run a, like, for example, every day or every week so that I can check if there are any changes or if somebody has disabled the versioning on my libraries and lists. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to stick to manual. I can choose the desired target. So for example, in my case, uh, or desired condition. So for example, in my case, I'm looking for uh, all the libraries that have versioning disabled. So I'm going to configure this specific condition to be uh, where uh, create major versions is set to false. And I'm going to choose this to be applied only to document libraries. So I'm going to choose appropriate list template from my drop down list. So I'm looking for a document library. I'm going to click here, close. So now I have two conditions. One is that I'm looking for uh, lists that have versioning or major versions disabled. And I'm only looking into documents that have uh, document libraries that have been created based on document library template. Okay. I can choose a target. So in my case, I want to stick to just one site collection, which is used for this demo. And that's it. Otherwise, I could, could have chosen uh, my entire farm, or there is an option for you to skip target selection altogether and to just stick to uh, and to allow users to choose the target during execution. I'm going to click finish here. The new query is going to be shown on the left hand side. And in order to run it, I just need to click a run query here. And voila, here are the results. So now when we have covered queries, we can jump into rules. Rules help us enforce governance policies in SharePoint. So for example, in case you have a policy that says versioning needs to be enabled, a rule can be very helpful to enforce that. So let's jump into one of the rules. So I already have a couple of rules that help me enable version history. I'm going to show you how this rule looks like inside. So I'm just going to click edit. A wizard is going to run for me and I can choose uh, same settings or similar settings as, as with queries. I'm going to click next here. And for this particular rule, uh, I can choose settings that I want. So for example, Let's say that my uh, policy is I want to create major versions and I'm going to choose that here and I can define the number of major versions I want to keep. And in my case, my policy says uh, we need to keep 10 versions of major versions. I can also configure content approval. I can choose uh, draft items, uh, settings and things like that. So everything, everything that is in SharePoint is available via our rule. I can choose to run rule manually, like uh, with queries or automatically on a scheduled basis. So if you, have a, if you have a policy, it would be good to run it automatically. So to enforce the policy, like let's say every day. And then I can choose filters. So where this rule is going to be applied to. In my case, I'm just going to leave that blank. And then I can choose uh, the, the desired target. I'm going to leave that with a skip option enabled. And now I can run my query. So for example, if I click here and I choose my 
web application and just narrow that down to site collection. The rule is going to run. And once I refresh my rule, I'm going to see that it has changed values for two document libraries that have been identified as problematic. So if I click on my sales document library, and if I open that in my Internet Explorer, and if I go to library, library settings, versioning settings, you are going to see that versioning has been enabled and that I have 10 versions configured to keep in my SharePoint settings. If I go back to SPDocket and I run my previous query that detects all the document libraries that have versioning disabled, you're going to see that these two libraries are no longer listed as results because that thing has been fixed using a rule. SPDocket comes with a couple of rules built in into the system that allows you to create your own rules based on these values. So if I click on the new rule, a wizard is going to start that allows me to create my own rules. There are two rule scopes available. One is for lists and the other one is for uh, subsites, SharePoint sites. I'm going to define a rule that says do, do not allow folders on document libraries. So I'm going to choose type folders. I'm going to click next. And I'm going to choose that new folder command is not available in the, my document libraries. I'm going to click next. Choose manual uh, as, uh, execution. And then I'm just going to leave this as is. I'm not going to define any condition. And then I'm going to choose a particular target. In my case, I'm going to choose my demo site collection. And that's it. You have a rule that defines that folders are not available for document libraries. Join our SP Docket webinars to learn more. Contact us for a personalized demo or try SP Docket free for 30 days at www.spdocket.com. Thank you. Have a nice day.